Hey everybody, Homeslice Center here, and in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at a spicy, unexpected core breaker in the open grade league meta, Bibarel. Bibarel is a water and normal type Pokemon with the moveset of Water Gun, Surf, and Hyper Fang, and up till now, it's pretty much been considered a meme Pokemon. However, with the new season, the open Great League meta shifted, and Bibarel beats a lot of top meta threats, including, but not limited to, Sableye, Gligar, Alolan Sandslash, and a close win over Lickitung. So without further ado, let's hop into the matches, and let's check out some leaderboard battles featuring Bibarel. Hopping to the first match, leading Shadow Gligar into Shadow A-Slash. Nightmare lead, I'm gonna save switch into Shadow Quagsire. They're gonna stay in with the A-Slash and fire off the Ice Punch to get some chip damage. I'm gonna let this go. If they stay in, I can hit them for super effective damage with the Mud Bomb, so my opponent is going to switch out and send in Sableye. So far, my opponent's team is incredibly weak to Bibarel, as both the A-Slash and the Sableye get easily defeated. I fire off Mud Bomb number two. My opponent wants to preserve switch advantage, so they give up a shield and they get a big farm down. This is a bit uncomfortable. I'm gonna send in the Shadow Gligar. I can tank one, and then I'm gonna look to shield one and potentially try and commit to a farm down. My opponent tries to go for the CMP tie. I'm not gonna throw there though. I'm gonna go for the extra wing attack. I'm looking for the farm down with the Gligar, and Gligar gets the farm down. In the back, my opponent has a Zoomeril, and this is a very winnable game for me. I'm gonna fire off the Aerial Ace, then go for the Dig, and now it's time for Bibarel to shine. The Dig will be no shielded. In comes Bibarel. Bibarel, of course, is going to be resisting both the bubbles from the Azumarill and double resisting the Shadow Claws from the Alolan Sandslash. So I'm gonna shield up the play rough. In comes the Alolan Sandslash. Sandslash is of course going to be firing off Drill Run here, but Drill Run does not get same type attack bonus. I fire off the Surf, that's gonna grab a shield from the A-Slash, A-Slash firing off the Drill Run, that does a decent amount of damage, but their fast moves are doing absolutely nothing here, and I can make it to the Surf. I over farmed here, Surf will get the KO, in comes the Azumarill, it's gonna be a race, Bib Barrel versus the Azumarill, and Bib Barrel makes it to the Hyper Fang, taking down the Azumarill, and that's a good game. Picking up a fairly neutral lead in the next match, Shadow Gligar into Sableye. I do want to save switch into the Quagsire to check and see if my opponent has a good counter in the back to a water type. So I'm going to save switch into the Quagsire. The Sableye is staying in here. So I'm just going to fire off the Mud Bomb and deal some very nice early chip damage. They have enough for the return. I'm looking to call the bait. So I let this go. It is just going to be the foul play. I'm going to let myself get as low as possible and then fire off the Mud Bomb. This way, if they choose to let this go, then whatever they send in does not get a lot of farm, but instead, my opponent decides to commit the shield and just fully get rid of the Quagsire. I'm going to be sending in the Shadow Gligar here. Gligar will be hit with the foul play. Gligar continuing to farm. Opponent tries to go for the CMP tie, but I'm not going to let that happen. I'm going to commit the shield. Gligar gets the farm down, leaving with energy. It's a Powder Snow Alolan Ninetales, and that is not great news for me. I fire off the dig, send in Bib Barrel, and in the back, they have a Shadow Shiny Charizard. So the opponent is running a team that is triple weak to Bib Barrel. Dragon Claw will be shielded here. I was a little worried the water guns would not KO. In hindsight, it might have come down to new mechanic, but I didn't really want to risk that. So instead, I'm just going to fire off the Surf to force the final shield. I can tank the Dragon Claw, and now it's going to be a race. Bit Barrel versus the Shadow A9, and Bit Barrel is able to make it to the Surf. Surf will be able to take down the Shadow A9, and that's another win for Bit Barrel. Moving into the next match, I do see a positive lead Shadow Gligar into Defense Deoxys. I definitely don't mind this matchup whatsoever. My opponent probably just going to be going for the Psycho Boost and Dip strategy that a lot of Defense Deoxys users love to do. They go for the Psycho Boost. Here, I saw the normal typing, so I fired off the Dig. It turns out it's not Greedent, it's actually Lickitung, and now I can send in Bib Barrel. Bib Barrel, thanks to the double resist on the Licks, honestly does have a slightly positive matchup here. They can go for the Power Whip. That does a massive amount of damage, but the important thing is, is they're not really ever able to farm down. The Licks just do nothing due to the double resist. I over farm there a decent amount, hoping that I can make it to a move versus the defense Deoxys. Back in comes the Deoxys, and Bib Barrel is able to hang on and make it to the Hyper Fang. Hyper Fang hits harder than Surf, and that does some nice damage. I'm now going to send in the Shadow Quagsire, and in the back, my opponent has Diggersby. Okay, this is going to be a bit interesting here. I'm a water type into a ground type, but I don't have any water moves. I'm farming up here. We see the switch into the Gligar. Did I catch the Scorching Sands? 
Yes, I did. That is a massive catch. And on top of that, they do not get the debuff. I'm farming up to the dig. I decide to go for the less expensive Aerial Ace here. Aerial Ace will actually be no shielded by the Diggers Beam, and I'm going to let this go. We know Scorching Sands will not KO. They have to go for the Hyper Beam to get the KO, and I'm going to look to over farm with the Quagsire. Quagsire unfortunately lags by a turn, and I do not get to force CMP there. That's extremely unfortunate. In comes the Defense Deoxys. I just have so much energy here, though. I'm firing off the Mud Bomb, grabbing the shield. I'm going for Mud Bomb number two. Deoxys in a really tough position here being down this much energy Deoxys continues to farm and they're going to lose CMP to the Quagsire Mud Bomb gets the KO of the Deoxys in comes the Diggersby and the opponent resigns the match Oh my goodness, we see a Dream Lead Shadow Gligar into Chestnut. They save switch into a Frostlass, and I get to bring in Frostlass's worst nightmare, Bib Barrel. Bib Barrel, of course, double resisting any ghost moves, so they're forced to go for the single resisted Avalanche. I've seen teams like this before. Oftentimes, it's Chestnut, Frostlass, and then Charizard in the back. If it's Charizard in the back, I don't really need switch advantage. So I'm just going to let this go. And guess what? It still doesn't KO. And now they have to double shield if they want switch advantage here. So that's very nice for me. They decide to let it go. So Bid Barrel able to win not only switch advantage, but shield advantage as well. And it is the Shadow Charizard in the back. I believe this was a line created by Wholesome, if I'm not mistaken. I'm going to over farm with the Gligar, switch into the Shadow Quagsire as they fire off their energy. And that will secure the game. Definitely a very favorable lead and swap there, but I was really impressed by Bibarel's ability to withstand multiple avalanches and all those powder snows to actually grab a potential two shield advantage or one shield advantage and switch. Mud Bomb into the Chestnut, not going to do a whole lot, but at this point, Chestnut needs three charge moves, and the double super effective wing attacks are unfortunately for the opponent just going to do way too much damage here. I shield up, they go for the Frenzy Plant, and Gligar will get the farm down. All right, moving into the next game, going up against fellow content creator Chillis FM, and we see a Nightmare lead, Shadow Gligar, into Dugong. I save switch into the Shadow Quagsire. You've got to be kidding me. There's a Shadow Meganium on my screen. I go for the Stone Edge. That does huge damage. Meganium looking for the farm down. Quagsire makes the Mud Bomb. I know this is resisted, but it's Shadow on Shadow. Will it KO? Yes, it does. And Shadow Quagsire flips switch versus a Grass type. In comes the Dugong. This Dugong is still going to be a bit problematic, though. I'm farming up with Bib Barrel. They're probably going for the Drill Run here. I can tank a Drill Run, but it looks like a second Drill Run plus the Ice Shards will probably KO. I'm farming up, and I'm firing off the Hyper Fang here. Hyper Fang into the Dugong does get shielded, and that's really bad. I'm now in a losing position. I think I have to call a bait. I'm going to call that it's the Icy Wind bait, and it is. Okay. That's a big call. I'm going to continue to farm with Bib Barrel. I make it to the last second Hyper Fang here. Hyper Fang, it's debuffed. It's still shielded. I'm going to send in the Gligar, and I just need Gligar. It's going to get debuffed so many times here by Icy Wind, but I need Gligar to try and clutch this game for me. Unfortunately, the Shadow Quagsire, I mean, it baited out the Meganium there, but with an influx of grass types into the meta, it does make it a bit tougher to use Quag as a pivot, and here... You're going to see the game losing decision. I go for the dig. I was hoping that I could dig and farm down, but as you can see, I cannot. I'm forced to go for the aerial ace in the back. It's a Venusaur. So if I was healthier on the Gligar, I could have won the game, but sadly we lose. We've got some spice on the lead from the opponent in the next match as I lead Shadow Gligar into Macargo. If they're staying in, I'm fully expecting they're going to shield, so I actually go for the Aerial Ace bait here, and it pays off. I'm going to farm up, switch into the Shadow Quagsire as they fire off their charge move. I'm triple strong against this, so I need to check and see what they have in the back. They're farming up. They're now going to send in another Meganium. Where are these Meganiums coming from? Oh my goodness, I am losing my mind at the amount of Meganiums I'm running into right now. This is not good at all. I don't make another Stone Edge. It's going to be the Mud Bomb there, and this is not good. 
I'm starting to think that I might need a new pivot instead of the Shadow Quagsire because unfortunately the Quagsire pivot is not doing particularly well and the team itself feels a little weak towards Dugong. Overall, the Gligar Bibaral core working out pretty nicely, but unfortunately, it feels like the Quag isn't necessarily pulling its weight. I'm able to grab a shield with a dig and make another catch onto Bibaral. It's the overheat. What do they have in the back? It's Kofagrigus. Okay, this is playable. I'm farming up with Bibaral, and I am firing off the Surf. Surf will deal some very solid chip damage. Kova Grigas looking to farm up. They're going to be forced to throw their energy as Bibarrel would make it to a Surf. They go for the Dark Pulse. It gets the KO. I have the move on the Gligar, and Aerial Ace will be able to get rid of the Kofa Grigas. Opponent, of course, still has the Macargo in the back. It's going to be a race. Shadow Gligar versus Macargo, and Shadow Gligar makes it to the dig. That is massive overkill, and that's a good game. We move into the next match, picking up a fairly decent lead Shadow Gligar into Carbink. Carbink, of course, can hit for neutral damage with the rock throws, but I get to hit back for super effective damage with the dig. I end up waiting a turn to make sure that they don't catch it on something like a flyer. Dig does quite a lot of damage. I'm going to save switch into the Shadow Quagsire, and it's a chestnut. And at this point, I was very convinced. Bibarel doing pretty well. Quagsire on the save switch, not working out for me whatsoever. I'm only going to make it to one more move, so I'm just going to fire off the Stone Edge here. Stone Edge, of course, is going to be resisted as well, and man, yeah, unfortunately, Shadow Quagsire in previous iterations of Open Great League could be used as a safe switch. Unfortunately, this is not one of them. So, after this match, I'm definitely going to make an adjustment to the team. I'm just going to let this through. They're going to fire off another Frenzy Plant. I'm going to send in Bib Barrel and hope for the 1v3. Opponent sends in Carbink. Carbink farming up, and I make it to the Surf. Surf will KO. They have stored energy here. Are they willing to shield? Yes, they are. They're shielding up. I'm farming up with Bib Barrel, trying to get the farm down, but they're going to fire off their energy at the last second. They go for the Rock Slide. They have the back-to-back. -back. And you know what? I'm going to double shield here. I don't know what they have in the back, but I'm going to hope that with health, I can win this game. It's Mew in the back. If this Mew doesn't have Wild Charge, I have a chance to win this game. We'll have to see what moveset are they running. They're going to shield up, and they throw right at Wild Charge Energy, and it is the Wild Charge, and we lose that game. As we move into these final matches, you're going to notice an important adjustment that I made to the team. Now with Shadow Quagsire, I didn't feel like was pulling its weight on the save switch, so I ended up switching it out for Lickitung, and that adjustment worked really, really well for me. As unfortunately, the Quagsire kept getting shut down by grass switch-ins, but the Lickitung, it's very hard to just like completely shut down a Lickitung save switch in the current meta, since Knocked Owl is a lot worse than it was previously. My opponent is going to send in Carbank, Carbank being hit with a back-to-back -back super effective Power Whips here. Power Whip will not KO, but it will get Carbank into the red. Carbank continuing to farm. Rockside, I believe this should be enough where the Rockside will KO. I think the opponent goes for a small undercharge there. I'm actually able to save the Lickitung and aggressively pivot back into the Gligar. This way, I mean the Rock Slide, it doesn't do a ton of damage, but this way I get to save the Lickitung for a potential catch. In the back, they have Frostlass. They're triple weak to Bib Barrel. I think that I can make the dig plus the Aerial Ace, but I miscalculated. I'm five energy short and I do not make the move. The good news is, is Frostlass's energy does nothing against Bib Barrel. I get to send in Bib Barrel. They're firing off their Avalanche, and that's going to be resisted. So I'm able to withstand that no problem. They have the very low health Carbink, and of course, they still have the very healthy Sableye. Opponent is going to be sending in the Sableye. I'm farming up with Bib Barrel, and I'm firing off the Surf. These Water Guns are applying a lot of pressure here, and their Shadow Claws do absolutely nothing. Again, that normal subtyping, very, very helpful on Bib Barrel. I'm firing off another Surf. Surf will be shielded. I'm farming up. We go for the catch onto the Lickitung. My opponent shows incredible patience as they do not let me catch their move. They're going for the foul play here. They're farming up, and they're going for another foul play. I can't farm down. I'm going to have to go for the Surf. And the question is, does the Carbank have energy? I'm able to make it to the Surf. Surf is going to be lethal. And it's, all that's left is the Carbank in the back. In comes the Carbank, and it does not make a move. 
hopping into the final match, and we've got a mirror lead, Shadow Gligar versus regular Gligar. I'm going to immediately save switch into Lickitung, as ideally I would love to align the Gligar onto Bibarel later in the game. They're staying in here, so I'm going to fire off this Body Slam. Body Slam gets some nice chip damage onto the Gligar, and I'm going to tank whatever they throw here. They go for the dig, opponent now sends in Metacham, and this is good. With this team, I need to bait out the counter user, and here I do make a misplay though. I can't make it to two body slams. I was hoping when I was playing that I could make it, but as you're gonna see, I can't, so I should have gone for the Power Whip. Power Whip, of course, does more damage, not by much, but it would have made it an easier farm down for Shadow Gligar. Now, Gligar is gonna have to tank one, shield one, and then try and wing attack down here, but it's definitely not an easy feat whatsoever. Gligar looking for the farm down on the Metacham and gets it. Gligar leaving with energy. Opponent sends in their own Gligar. I'm going for the Aerial Ace, and then it's Bibarel time. In comes Bibarel in the back. Opponent has Lickitung. Okay. This is very doable here. I'm building up to the Hyper Fang and I'm going for the Surf. I just need that consistent chip damage and my opponent will commit a shield. The nice thing is, again, due to the normal subtyping, I'm double resisting the Licks, so they have to land a Power Whip if they want to deal any meaningful damage. I shield the first as I wasn't expecting them to bait. I'm going to build back up to the Hyper Fang and again go for the Surf. My opponent is going to call the bait here. They can land the Power Whip, but guess what? It's not going to KO. And they're going to have a pretty tough time trying to go for the farm down, even though my health is very low. I'm going to fire off the Surf. Surf into the Lickitung. Will be no shielded. They're trying to win with the Gligar. The water guns put a lot of pressure onto the Gligar. Gligar dies with a charge move. And that's a good game. And now some final thoughts on how the team, and specifically Bib Barrel, performed. First off, these battles took place at leaderboard ELO, so top 500 in the world, low 2600s to mid 2600s, if the leaderboards had updated today, would be around number 400 to 450 in the world, so again, some pretty good competition. I was able to go slightly positive with the team. I did have better results when I switched to Lickitung, as Lickitung just ended up being a lot more consistent on the save switch than Quagsire. All in all, I think the team worked pretty solidly, as they did go slightly positive, but I was pretty impressed with Bib Barrel. Bib Barrel, it doesn't have the greatest stats ever, but its unique typing and coverage does make it a cool anti-meta core breaker. So it's not like a top meta Pokemon by any means, but since the meta is very heavily reliant on like Alolan Sandslash, Gligar Lickitung cores, Sableye, there's some pretty cool anti-meta play for Bib Barrel, if you're wanting to spice things up a bit. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. If you're enjoying the content, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And a special thank you as always to our members here on YouTube. The support you guys provide is sincerely appreciated. So thank you guys oh so very much. And until next time, I've been Home Slice Henry.